Hey guys, it's Steve from the forums. Uh, I'm just going to do a little quick video. Uh, my new load tester that I made. Uh, give the uh, thanks, special thanks to uh, Dr. Bass, who gave me the idea uh, of using a hairdryer element as a load tester. Or sorry, for, for a load, or a resistive load as you should say. And it works really well. So here I am testing some lithium magnesium. I believe they're 6 amp hour. They're similar to the uh, Yardworks pack with a BMS on it. And it's hooked up to my Turnigy meter with an auxiliary battery. 4 volt battery, I guess, 4.2. Got some alligator clips running. And there's my resistive load tester. So basically, I got two computer fans, and I got the two rods with the heater element from a hair dryer. So I bought these the hair dryer uh, that I used here off from Walmart. They're called uh, I think it's a Dura brand uh, hair dryer, and I pulled out the two big heater elements. So there's one there. There's another one down there. Uh, and I basically, you know, I try to, because when you pull them out, they're a little bit stretched, but I, I basically consent, uh, push them together so that they're a little bit, they're very tight, as you can see. And uh, so it's basically one, two, three. I guess you can say three rounds there and then three rounds there. And I got two uh, pieces of threaded bar. These two ones here this one here and then this one over there you know I could stretch the coils out to different different lengths it's basically very basic it's a you know positive negative on that side and you just stretch it according to what I need so right now it's set up for like a 25 volt load 20 amp tw or roughly 20 amps and it's cooled by these two fans and my neat little 12 volt power supply one amp nice little supply and uh, show you some numbers I could do a lot more than this but I run 20 amps just to keep you know heat down on the on the wires and such but it works really well 500 amp sorry 500 amp <laughs> 500 watt load and uh, to give you a cost you know or how much it would cost you to build one you know, you figure the hair dryers go to Walmart, nine bucks. This is for this is only one hair dryer that I used. Two fans. Now you guys can get uh, creative. Use a fan from like a, you know, like if you buy a little electric heater, just use the fan off of that. Or you know, do what I did. Just got two computer fans I had kicking around. They're two 120 mil fans up to a little power supply to cool the the heater coil. You know, make sure that you. Uh, Use some nice connections there, so I use you know some 10 gauge solid strands of wire, soldered it up, ran some 10 gauge wires to the the power poles there. Got my turnigy meter, and then that you know you could probably use better connections than these. I just use alligator clips just because it was easy for me to connect. I didn't want to damage the connectors on the battery, but you can power pull that and uh, you hook it up to your battery. So what I'd recommend, um, you know. There's various setups you can do. Uh, what I can say is, just kind of think of it as this one coil. If you put, uh, let's say, 120 volts, I wouldn't do it, but I, this is what I believe. You put one lead of that and one lead of that into your wallet. Just think of it as 120 volts. So when you parallel the coil, you're reducing the resistance and therefore creating a bigger load. So you'd see what I mean. Like if you get a hair dryer and you plug it into, um, you know, you just turn the hairdryer on and plug it directly to your battery pack, you'll notice that you'll get a very minimal load on it. So by doing this, you know, by parallel, paralleling the uh, the wire there, I don't know the correct termin terminology of the heater coil there, but you basically lower the resistance and therefore create more load. And uh, you can look at a load like this. So, And yeah, so it's pretty good. I mean, uh, for a 20 amp load, continuous, I mean, very low budget. Nine bucks, let's say twenty dollars for the fans. If you go, you know, some good one twenty mil fans, 
You buy the turns you meter from Hobby King. What's it run you most? 25, 30 bucks. Get your wires. It's a very cheap, I mean, for less than, well, let's say $50. <laughs> Good old piece of 2x4, some zip ties. Yeah, I mean, you get to hold it all together. And, uh, you know, okay, let's say another 10 bucks for the, the supply. So 50, 60 bucks, you can build it all for a, a pretty decent uh, resistive load tester. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'd like to see some other guys uh, building one as well. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Thanks a lot. Bye.